everyone, I'm Abby. Today we'll be finishing up my Edwardian tartan flannel walking suit with the jacket. The flannel is cotton flannel that I got on sale at Joanne's. You can see the previous video of my walking skirt to see how it was made. I had just enough fabric, I think about six yards, to make the skirt, the body of the jacket, and a couple masks. I was even able to match the plaids fairly well. Using this cotton flannel was a bit of an experiment. And though it's turned out much better than I hoped for, I don't think I'll use it again unless it's the only option. It's a really great cheap option when you can't afford nicer fabrics, though. For this jacket, because I didn't have enough for the sleeves, I was able to find a non-stretch black velvet in my stash that I was already going to use for the lapels. I had about two yards, give or take. I was able to get all the pieces to fit on the correct nap and everything. I had heard that this Angela Clayton pattern that I'll be using for the jacket is harder to work with because it's meant for taller bodies. This actually worked out in my favor, being tall myself. I didn't have to modify the pattern much to fit. So let's get to the sewing part. I'm starting with McCall's pattern 7732 by Angela Clayton for the jacket. I'm testing the pattern pieces to figure out where they will fit on the doubled flannel that I have left. I needed to see how much I could fit. This is where I figured out that I had enough for the body, but not the sleeves. I was testing my green velvet to see if it was enough for the sleeves, but it definitely wasn't. So I got out my bigger piece of black velvet, and that's definitely enough. Now that I worked that out, I have to create my patterns using my interlining. I decided to use Truly Victorian Etten Jacket TV 498 sleeves to have bigger puffs. I created much larger puffs using math to make sure the sleeves still fit to the underside. I also started cutting out other lining pieces that fit on this poly cotton fabric piece. This is the lapel lining and one of the jacket pieces, all of which are meant to be on the diagonal green. another piece of poly cotton and started laying out the rest of my jacket pieces. I did my normal edits because my hips and bust are separate sizes, so I blend the two sizes as I cut. There we have it! All the inner lining pieces so far. Off camera, I used all the interlining pieces to create a mock-up, in case I needed edits before cutting into the final fabric. As you can see, it fits great right off the bat. I love the size of the sleeve, and the jacket lines just look amazing. I didn't like how pointy the lapels were, so I cut those down. I ripped apart my mock-up, and now I'm using all the pieces to cut one side at a time of the tartan flannel. Next, I took all the one side flannel pieces and matched them to the flannel on the other side so that all the pieces would match. This part is the hardest as flannel stretches and I had to make sure everything matches up. One good thing is I don't have to pin the flannel since it sticks to itself really well. I decided to take the point off the back of the collar as well. I just smoothed the transition and cut. I spent a bunch of time petting the velvet to figure out which way the nap went before folding it in half to prepare to cut the rest of my pieces. I chose to have the nap going straight down the sleeve. I think this works best for both fitting the pattern pieces on the fabric and for the feel of the garment. I had to switch to the floor where Diana was super happy to help. I just needed more space to pin. Next, I pinned the lapel piece with the nap going down. I find this direction to be the best because you can smooth down the fabric as you're wearing it, and it feels nice. Same with the collar. I pinned it on the fold with the nap going down. I need two of the collar pieces, so I cut another on the fold. And I have to move Diana because she loves getting in the way. like, 
this is stupid. I'm leaving. Here I'm finally figuring out the belt pieces. I have the pieces cut out from another belt in the works. It's from the Butterick 5970 pattern that I used for the skirt. I cut the inner lining out of the poly cotton first. I'm cutting two sets so I have the inner lining and the lining. I do the same for the small bow that will go in the back. I cut boning out of plastic rigoline I have on a roll from Amazon. I've decided to make the belt black velvet to match the accents on the jacket. I round out the plastic boning with scissors. I have five pieces in three different sizes. I found an extent belt that had this boning pattern. I lay the interlining pieces on the corresponding flannel pieces and start hand basting with red thread and long basting stitches. I pinned and basted the belt pieces to their interlining pieces as well. I'm laying out the backmost pieces of the jacket bodice and pinning them together to prepare for sewing. I also pin together the side pieces, then I pin those to the back. Sometimes it's easier to pin a bunch of seams and then go sew them. the back pinned up. It's a lot because of the flouncy hip area. I hand sewed the tiny dart on the front bodice piece with a hand double back stitch. I had to update the dart to a larger one to smooth the transition a bit better than the original pattern had it. Then I pinned the bottom front piece in. Machine sew all the pieces I have just pinned, the front and the back. Now I'm pinning the front flannel bodice pieces to the back piece. I pin the shoulders as well. machine sew that all up. I pin the collar pieces together. I consulted the pattern instructions to figure out where the lining gets pinned to the lapel piece. It's a bit of an odd one. I cut all the lining out of black poly slippery lining material I had in my stash. I had just enough for the jacket. I checked to make sure I pinned the lining pieces correctly. It appears to fit, so hey, there we go. I pin the velvet sleeve pieces together. I machine sew the collar piece. I machine sew the lining to the lapel piece and I add the dart in when I get to it. Because neither fabric is stretch, I can pull it through the machine slightly. Velvet likes to slip around, so I have to watch it closely as I go. I machine sew the sleeves. I don't mind machine sewing velvet when it's velvet to velvet. It's much easier and stays in place. Time 
cleaned across all the seams. I clip the curves as I go as well, so they will lay flatter. It's a bit hard to press sleeve seams without a sleeve ham, so I do the best I can. I also make a bunch of bias tape out of the maroon satin I used to trim the skirt. I'll be using the non-shiny side again. I think my bias tape is about an inch and a quarter wide. I'm trying a thing where I have the bias tape show on the flannel side, but not on the velvet side. It's going to be a bit tricky, but nice in the end. I pin it the width of the seam allowance in from the edge, 5 eighths of an inch. I'm adding this along the whole bottom edge of the jacket and up the side of the lapel. I ran a machine stitch along the whole seam allowance. That's how I knew where to place the bias tape. I machine sew a quarter inch from the edge of the bias tape. This will leave a quarter inch of the fabric showing on the outside. In order for my plastic boning to stay flat, I iron it on a low heat just enough to heat it flat. I now fold all the bias tape to the outside and press it in place. stitch my sleeve cuffs down. I'll be hand attaching the lining, so I just find this an easier way to keep the cuff flat. I've decided to add some embellishment to the cuffs. I make cording by hand rolling the maroon bias tape. It's tedious, but it matches the rest of the trim this way. the cording that I created in a pattern on the sleeve cuffs. I turned the sleeve inside out and folded the lining down to whip stitch it to the cuff. I have the lining pinned at the top to make sure it stays at the right spot. I did a ton of hand finishing for the rest of the jacket. I don't think I have footage or pictures of some of this. I think because it was a lot of hand work, I just got in the zone and forgot to film. I attached the collar to the top of the flannel jacket bodice by hand using a double back stitch. I pressed the bias edge of the flannel to one quarter inch showing on the outside, and I hand top stitched that in place. I whip stitched the bias tape down on the inside. Next, I folded under and pinned the entire lining down to the inside of the jacket. I wanted to hand attach this, as it lays flatter than if I had machine attached it. Plus, the velvet would have given me problems. I whip stitched the lining in place around the whole outer edge. I left the lining free at the armholes. I hand gathered the sleeve puffs and hand attached them to the flannel bodice arm side. I clipped the curves, folded the lining in, pinned, and hand whip stitched the lining to the sleeve. I hand top stitched the velvet lapel down. It was puffing out. I top stitched the collar as well.
I had these amazing plastic lion head button loop things that I had salvaged from a modern corset top that I found at Forever 21 years ago. I'm using two of them as the attachments for the front of the jacket. I later added coat weight hook and eyes to relieve the stress on the buttons. For the belt, I'm adding the same bias tape that I did to the edge of the flannel jacket bodice. I pin and sew in place. I press that to the outside and baste in place. And I fold to the outside, leaving one quarter inch showing, top stitching along the edge of the maroon bias tape. I whip stitched that on the inside as well. Then I fold under and whip stitch the lining on top of the whole belt. The lining is where I attached the sew on boning with machine, as you can see here. I hand sewed on four hook and eyes. I also top stitched the lining down along the edge of the bias tape to get a really flat piece. I sewed together the bow and attached it to the top piece in the back. And there we go! The jacket and the belt are complete! Thank you for joining me today as I finished the jacket to go with my Edwardian tartan flannel walking suit. I was lucky it snowed right after I finished the suit, so I was able to get a few shots wearing it in the snow. It's very warm. With all the layers and the gloves, I was perfectly comfortable. I will have more of that footage and a closer look at the outfit and the underpinnings in a getting ready video coming soon. If you liked this video and want to see more historical costume and sewing videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Happy sewing and stay warm. She made a muffin. Muffin, 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 muffin. Maybe. <laughs> Honk. Honk. Oh, God.